Well, I'm uh, walking around Parkdale, and I'm going to use this intro specifically for this great episode uh, to say, one, if you think you can drive with the traffic in Liberty Village during the month of June or July, you thought wrong. So I would not do that. Uh, It's much faster to walk pretty much anywhere. And uh, two, did you see bodies, bodies, bodies? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm Alex Sethi, and this is Your Worst Song. This time with Sunsetter. Specifically, I know your music better, so I'm definitely curious about what uh, what you're going to choose for your worst song. But obviously, <laughs> we'll, we'll get around to that. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe we can start off with uh, where you're based right now. I know that you're not, unlike a lot of people uh, who are busy in the Toronto scene, you're not actually based in Toronto. No, I am. Um, right now, I live in um, like outside of Tilsonburg, which is like I live in Norfolk County, um, so it's like out in like the farm country area um like i did live in toronto at one point and i did live in hamilton Mm -hmm. um so like i've i've done the the toronto thing and whatever and i I lived in toronto for like a couple of years but it's just like too much like it's too expensive and too hard to do anything a big thing for me is like i've always like having like a home like a home studio and project studio at home is like extremely important to me so like living in toronto it just wasn't possible for me to have the studio and be able to play drums and stuff and whatever. So, you know, like I had to get out. So I, no, so I moved to Hamilton. That's very Hamilton. smart. That's very yeah, smart. I, I feel like a lot of people feel that way, but don't actually, you know, pull the trigger on it, so to speak. And just slowly, there's the sunken cost fallacy of like, oh, I've spent so much time here. I don't want to leave now. Yeah. Uh, it's weird because yeah. it's like I lived in Toronto for like a couple of years, like not really even that long, but it's like I still made a decent amount of friends living there at the time and then and it's like i haven't lived in toronto since like like i moved away from toronto in i don't know 2017 or 20 whatever like like for i lived there in an actual apartment for a while but then in like 2017 i was living in toronto but i was like living in my van i wasn't actually i didn't have an apartment i just had like a jam space and a van (laughs) so i have nice so i was so i was still living there for a while um at that maybe, point maybe this is like, a silly question but is that uh is that legal <laughs> no no i mean not i mean it's not really like i don't really know it's kind of like a gray area yeah like, exactly I stay, right yeah i would stay at like walmart and stuff sometimes or whatever and i would stay like just in random like streets and park on the side of the road or whatever and because theoretically you know. if you're in your van anytime you're stopped you could be like oh i'm just like taking a break i'm on my way well exactly right like i did get i did get like once in a while i would get woken up like you know, by a cop. A tap on the and, window, yeah. Yeah, and they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, oh, I'm just, like, sleeping. And they'd be like, oh, you need to move. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Small price to pay uh, yeah. to do that. Plus, if you have the recording, or not recording space, you said uh, jam space, you, that, that's actually not a terrible sort of two space solution. Yeah. yeah. It worked, sort of, at the time. Um, <laughs> but I just, you know, like... Uh, it, it 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 was a lot though like it became really like i i was doing it for like almost like a year and a half or more like and um i mean even if financially it wasn't stressful which i'm sure it was uh mentally that would just well be yeah kind of stressful, that's the right? thing like living living in a van and doing the car thing like it's sort of like it just gets like it, yeah it sort of it started to make me feel like i was like like homeless basically like it's sort of, you right. know what i mean because i was like hanging out like I was sleeping at like Cherry Beach and like Kensington yeah. and stuff like that. It just sort of felt like I was like, what am I doing? Like was, you know, I'm like in it, Toronto. Admittedly, <laughs> like, it sounds like homeless homelessness with more steps a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like essentially, like and and you know, I didn't have any money, so I was like I couldn't really do much else. So like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure <laughs> it's uh shaped your character, if that's what they say, right? Mm-hmm. Um but you were able to make it out so to speak to the how far out is norfolk uh like so i mean on a good day like without traffic it takes me like an hour and 45 minutes to get to like downtown toronto but like with traffic it takes me like two and a half sometimes almost three hours depending on how bad the traffic is yeah of course uh 
so what is Norfolk like? Like what, what your area? What is it like? Is it honestly kind of? I, I'm well aware I'm filling the stereotype of Toronto person being like, so what's your town? Is it kind of just like uh, look like a plus sign from a bird's eye view and it's just two streets? What's <laughs> like describe it? Is it cottage country yeah, well, basically? Is that the idea? No, it's more like uh, more like farm. Like, okay. like it's more like, like the actual town that I live in is called Cortland and it's just outside of Tilsonburg. It's like between Tilsonburg and Delhi. Um, and, um, they're both just like farm towns. Mm -hmm. And like, when I say like, like where I live, I live like on a main road, but it's still like, I, I like I'm surrounded by fields or whatever. And, okay, um, see, yeah. but it's like the, the type of town, like it's not cottage country. It's more like working class like farm yeah. people <laughs> like right. if that makes any sense it's just no, like no, I, there's definitely a real difference because cottage country can be you know that's that has uh implications of class as well and all that stuff yeah, so it makes it's... sense what you're saying uh yeah unfortunately I, I a lot of farm country at least in ontario i would just call pre-golf course that's that's yeah, all it, yeah. that's or all like, it well, is like where i live it's more like it's more like pre like uh, like subdivision probably okay or like yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like it's like because tilsonburg itself is expanding a lot and they're building lots of subdivisions and that's like fine or whatever but it's it, you know the, the way that housing is these days it's like oh, it's yeah. not they're not actually building affordable subdivisions they're no, building no, no, these, no, like, right, exactly like eight hundred thousand dollar like huge houses that nobody can afford to buy and stuff yeah and it's just like yeah so <laughs> yeah well that's uh what else is new really you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. um that's a i'm curious a little bit more to hear though if there's is there a music scene or an arts scene where you are oh god no 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 no, no. you are no, the no. walking music or <laughs> yeah. scene, i guess yeah the one uh, thing about like that i will say about this area is that it's like yeah it's it's like beautiful geographically and it's really nice being here but it's like where i live like um, like culturally it's probably one of the like most backwards places in all of ontario like oh really it's it's sort of like like i'm surrounded by churches and like really 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 like extremist sort of like evangelical type of religious people like it's like it's right. a lot of like a lot of like mennonites and a lot of like really extreme like baptist church type of like people and does because that lead to a lot of uh, uh, foreboding uh, lawn signs? Yeah, that's, it does. That's what I'm it does. Imagining. And it, yeah. it, it also leads to like people like like you know during Pride Month, for instance, like the 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 town of Simcoe, which is like sort of like the 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 main like the whatever the capital of this area. Mm -hmm. um, they don't put up the pride flag on their on their like um, you know town hall or whatever. They just like don't do it. And like and also like when people do hang pride flags and stuff during um during pride months like last year for instance yeah. a lot of them got torn down and like burned and shit because oh, like boy. everyone was like because all these like small town like farm bros are just like you know they just like hate it so they just i don't know it's actually like yeah. really messed up and not it's good. it's their but, weekend uh activity you know what i mean which is so messed yeah up. like they drive yeah. around in their big trucks and they they just like yeah yeah. Oh, we yeah. smashed all the mailboxes last month. I guess that means this month. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this it's, we'll it's yeah. really quite awful, you know, especially considering like I'm not even remotely like aligned with that. So it's like, no, right. it feels weird to be like around that. So it would be yeah. weird if you were talking about it and you were like, but no, there's a thriving artistic community that's open <laughs> to a lot of progressive ideas. Yeah. Uh, well, Okay, so forgive me. Did you say where were you born then? In uh, were you born in Canada? Yeah, I was born like I I was like I from I'm from Fort Erie. I don't know if you okay. know where that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. Where I was like born so, and raised. Through. And then when did you come to Toronto? Uh, I moved to Oakville when I was like 18, and then I moved to Toronto when I was like 23 or something like that. And what was so, the impetus like just because you want to get to the big city, leave your area, or was it more specifically related to music already? Well, I moved to Oakville first to go to Sheridan. I was like going to Sheridan mm. college. I was there for like four years or whatever. Um, what'd you think? Just quickly. What'd you think? Um, I mean, <laughs> I was like, try like, well, I went for, I tried to get into media, uh, media arts, like the film program. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, like I got into the fundamentals program, but then I kept getting denied, like, um, to get into oh, the from, like actual 
actual media arts program. So I ended up just taking visual arts instead. Like I took like the, like the called like a visual and creative arts, which is, it's sort of just like a broad, like arts program. Nice. I took that for like three years or whatever. It's like the school is cool or whatever, but I don't know, you know, (laughs) it's sort of just like art, art school vibes or whatever. Like, I don't know. (laughs) And it's all, yeah, the closer you are to it as in art school vibes or even like, the more within it, the more you see how silly it is to quantify yeah. any of it as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure that it's still, I feel like doing any art helps inform the main art that you do. It makes think you it think was, about it. You know what I mean? It was super valuable. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. that me studying, like, actual visual arts and stuff like that really had an impact on on my music, like, uh, understanding of, like, a, of pursuing music as, like, a career and stuff. Because, like... Um, you know, it's sort of just like there's like I had classes in art school that were like like interpretive painting and drawing classes where I had to like mm-hmm. learn how to explain like art or whatever, you know what I mean? And like and I had a teacher who was really like um uh supportive in that way and she would sort of encourage you to just like talk about what you were like really feeling and stuff and like I don't know. So it made me have a better understanding of like how to get to like a deeper level of where I was like feeling with what I was writing and stuff and how to, ex- how to explain that, I guess. And um, absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think learning to articulate at least what you think when you're making your own art is a really, mm-hmm. really good thing, especially, <laughs> especially for visual art. Like let's say you make, let's say you make an abstract piece of art. You're the one who made it. So at least, you know, the feeling it's supposed to convey or what went into yeah. it. But if you can't are really articulate that in a way that, where you can imagine some being in somebody else's shoes and how they might not have any of those first clues that you have, you need to be able to articulate it in some way to, you know, give them a little key in to. Yeah, totally. And it's the same way with music. I mean, you and I both know it's fucking brutal to have to be like, can you describe your career and sound and where yeah. you're based in uh, 30 characters or less or whatever? Yeah, it's, like, can you explain this song like, yeah, yeah. Like, in like two sentences? And it's like, no, well, exactly. <laughs> so it is a skill. It is a skill, you know. Uh, and, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, well, maybe that can lead us into. I'm trying to think of the best way to go about this because obviously the first the first question I usually ask is what was your best or worst gig and we can get started that way but I want to <laughs> give people more context. Did you ever have a artist name or uh, a, d- a different band before Sunsetter? Or was it? Cause it's been yeah, that for a while, right? But it's been that since like 2015. I've been okay. using that name since okay. like around 2015. But before that. I had, it was more like more cringe. Like I was doing, <laughs> I didn't like before that I was doing like, um, it was mainly like instrumental post rock, like stuff. That okay. Well, that's not cringe necessarily. Oh, well, no, but like the name. So my name before that, it was called they themselves are beasts. I don't know, okay. Like, yes. That's, that's, what it was, that's what it was called before. That really like fits rant. into like the, I know exactly now the kind of sound you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> grammatically so like, fancy it could be like mary shelley could have written it as a, a book title yeah. yeah and i had another name before that too uh like i was just like going under like i don't even remember what it was it was like i was doing like it was sort of like a soul thing but I, that was like mm. 2010 era like with you know um because i used to just like upload stuff to soundcloud and bandcamp just like yeah right on like just like whatever like it was just like, like a around... receptacle with no uh you weren't f- yeah honing it yeah, to be I, anything yeah yeah I, I think the first time i ever uploaded something to bandcamp was like 2009 or whatever and uh, uh yeah. do you hear yeah, that kids just... <laughs> but it was just like it was just like random you know when i listen to it now it's like definitely like really experimental and sounds like you know pretty trippy or whatever but it also just sounds like bad so I'm just like, what is that? Does it also a third thing? Does it also feel like because it's long enough ago and you don't necessarily make music too much like that now? Although there's definitely experimental uh, bits to Sunsetter. Yeah. Uh, does that feel like it was written by someone else? Because even my uh, music, if I go back to 2018, I'm like, I remember. It's sort of like you do and don't remember the person who made that. 
I definitely know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It, it can be weird to like listen to it because it's like, like when I listen to it, I'm like, oh yeah, right. Like that's, that was a long time ago. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what was I like doing? Yes. I don't know. It's like weird. Like, it's like, how do I, yeah. It puts you back in the, in the version of you that thought it was a good idea. It's like to make all those things. It's a very odd, uh, yeah, it's very totally. odd experience. Well, okay. <laughs> then speaking of that, and then you moved into Sunsetter, obviously. And yeah, that's, that's now been sort of even more kicked up a notch. You sort of put even more focus into your career over the last, what would you say? Like four years of Sunsetter? Yeah, probably. Yeah. The last like four or five years. It's weird. Yeah. Cause like when I changed the name to Sunsetter, like around 2015, I had at that time, like I had made like a, it was mostly like an electronic, like ambient album, mm -hmm. which is on my band camp. Um, but it's not on like, it's not on Spotify or anything like that yet. Right. But, um, and at the time I was like, oh, I'm going to use the name Sunsetter just to do like ambient electronic stuff or whatever. It would be a good name for like, that. So it makes sense. Yeah. But then, but then I was just like, ah, whatever. And I just started putting out everything <laughs> like under that name. And I was yeah, like, that's yeah. fine. Cause that's sort of what I usually do. But, um, well, forgive yeah, me. I'm so, sure you've been asked this a bunch of times, but how did you come up with the name? Um, I don't even know. I was okay. just like, I, I was just like writing out, like I do this thing where I just like, you know, we'll write in my book and I'll just like write like a bunch of names and different titles and stuff mm -hmm. for like songs mm -hmm. or like band names or whatever. And I'll for just anything. do that for the end yeah. endlessly. And then I'll just like be at the time I was just like, I really want to change my name. So like what, you know, and I just thought of like a bunch of ideas and I guess I was like partly inspired by like, you know, the band Sun O like mm, obviously yep. with the two with that. the two ends or whatever and stuff well, i was so. gonna ask why that specifically so that's where that it's a little bit of a reference slash homage slash whatever the fuck yeah that's you cool know. that's cool and like yeah yeah <laughs> no no that's 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 great and i think it suits still the music you do even though it's not what it began as you know uh yeah. so yeah okay then let's get into it you've been clearly in music for a very long time when i initially brought up best or worst gigs does anything jump out at you you can choose one direction or the other first but any events that, that um, come out in your mind the worst the worst gigs i would say yeah. <laughs> i would say like um i remember this time i played in like london ontario and it was like i can't even remember when it was it might have been like 2016 or 17 mm -hmm. uh, and like I was like playing with like in ears and like, well, you know what? Well, that was a bad one. It was most, it was mostly bad <laughs> just because there was, like, it was mostly bad because there was like this, like, you know, just like drunk, like old, like London dude. Like we were playing at this like crappy bar that wasn't even like a venue or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, there was just like this drunk, like old, like London guy there. And he was just like, heckling me the whole time and i'm just like what are you doing because i was just uh -huh. like singing i was just like singing my songs you know they're all just like emo and whatever and this guy is just like, like i don't know he's just like what? like i don't even remember what he was yelling he's just yelling no, no. Stuff at me. Yeah. it's so. bizarre because it's like okay if comedians <laughs> don't like heckling where it makes even the vaguest amount of sense because there's a question and answer thing with comedians why would musicians want heckling it makes yeah well exactly really no sense you know what i mean it was uh, just like the the bar was just not the vibe at all for what i was doing and yeah you know i think there's another one too i would say like would be the worst i remember i played this was like even longer ago like probably 2015 when i had like just changed to sunsetter and i was like just doing and i so back then i would do solo shows only like a couple times a year but i would do them like all with like my laptop and like mm -hmm. um like I would have like backing tracks and like I would play guitar and I'd have like my laptop going and I would play like keys and I would kind of like improvise stuff, but I would also play like with songs that I had done and stuff. Right. And, um, so still a bit of an ordeal, even when it's solo, you know? Yeah. So there was yeah. a lot going on and I yeah. just remember like I was playing like at the fucking silver dollar room. Um, okay. And I was like, for some reason, headlining <laughs> and like, there was like there was these other bands on the bill. I won't even mention their names because I just feel like it's like embarrassing or whatever to talk about. Okay, okay. Those people. Like not for me, but just no, no, I it's, gotcha. It's fine. Like, but um, it was like yeah, and I just 
my whole setup like was like malfunctioning and my like interface wasn't working and like my backing tracks weren't working and i was like out of sync with things and like it just and i just didn't practice like at all and i just like at the time just had no real experience playing live with my own stuff i guess so i was just Mm -hmm. like it was really bad and i just remember like feeling so embarrassed and like but i did do some stuff in it that felt good and you know something like I don't know, it, was, it was like mostly fine but it was just like it wasn't great it just really wasn't great and well maybe that's an example of like a teachable moment for anybody out there listening who's nervous for to for this exact thing to happen to them okay it happened to andrew and now he is here a successful well in my opinion musician <laughs> in you know toronto and ontario he got through it and uh you know, yeah making, making great music i, was, I think that everybody goes through something akin to that for sure too and it's totally, like yeah you're gonna it's have like an a, issue on stage 100 yeah like it's like a learning it's a learning like thing you know like exactly sure. it's a learning thing and and i asked you your worst gig and you're bringing it up and still there are things you learned from it that were good so really how how terrible can it be you know what i mean yeah uh, as for a, as for yeah. like best I, yeah. I mean i don't know like i'm like You've done a bunch of cool uh, gigs from my outside opinion. Yeah, like there was one uh what am I trying to think of? Like um like the one honestly the one that we did at the Monarch like um for the Exclaim show, like that mm-hmm. was like a pretty fun show. Like but um um even um yeah, like that one was really good. I don't know, like um well, what sticks out to make it good? Are you just thinking of the energy level? Or yeah, thinking... it was like the energy of it. Like okay. the energy felt really good. Like we were having fun and stuff. And some of the shows that we played, honestly, like when we when we went on tour down to South by, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> we played a couple of shows down there that were like I was like that were like really fun because I was like um, sort of feeling like kind of crazy and like <laughs> and, like <laughs> why. Minor. what? What caused like, that? I don't know, just being on tour, I guess, or whatever. Oh, okay. and, being sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and like my my energy level was like really high. So we were like doing like we played this one show where we were on the floor, like with the with the audience or whatever. Like we weren't like on a stage. Oh, no, like stage, I was like I on see, the floor. I see. Yeah, yeah. And um, so like I was like literally like running around and like screaming and just like <laughs> pushing people and stuff and like and like moshing with people like while we were playing. Amazing. So like so that was like really really fun like i love doing that and i, I want to do that kind of stuff like more often it's just that like when we play in toronto a lot of venues have like a stage so i feel like i'm like oh i gotta like, get off the stage to like, go into the audience and there's all this like stuff in the way and i'm just like well, do, you think, it do you think also maybe uh well two things about that i think when you go down to south by southwest first of all especially if you're an act not from the u.s you want to make a name for yourself so well yeah you want to have a spectacle so if there's a time and place to do it it's there so it's good that you did it there however the second thing i was (laughs) hi we're parage of convenience a dating service but for band members looking for that band member Well, that's all the time we paid for. I feel like another reason that if I was in your position, I would feel a little bit maybe self-conscious or inhibited to do to go that far if I, if I was in Toronto is because I know people here. Like, yeah, they're well, all yeah. strangers, you know what I mean? And sure, yeah. you're trying to turn them into fans of yours, but other than that, you can probably do whatever you want and you crawl around yeah. and make sounds like a baby and then you leave and you're good, yeah. you know? But here, well, it depends on the, we'll remember. Uh, yeah, it depends on like the energy of the gig. Like, I tried to do it um, after we got back from South By. Like, we played at the Monarch again after we got back from South By. Mm-hmm. and i sort of i sort of tried to do it a little bit that night but everybody was like really really low energy that night like at that show like that show was kind of like a weird vibe like there was a decent amount of people there but everyone was just like it was like a kind of cold and dark day and everybody was uh-huh. just like really really chilling like so when we were playing our set i was like oh like we just got back from tour and i want to go crazy but everyone's kind of just like standing around so it's like yeah kind of hard to do that <laughs> like, for sure although yeah. i think your music um 
Well, we get into it, but uh, but uh, I think that your your music studio version wise can go really soft as yeah. well as well, and then live. If anybody's seen you play the songs live, I would say they're almost all of them are kicked up a notch, you know, two times yeah. heavier, and. Yeah. I love that because it's a variety. If I want to hear the softer official version, I go listen to those. If I want to see the live, then great, right? That's the yeah. that's when you should do it. But it would yeah. make sense to me, or or it would seem logical that the fans of yours who did know your music and were com- uh, used to the st- softer studio versions would come in with a lower energy. But you're yeah, coming totally. back from South by Southwest, like <laughs> I'm gonna scream in your face. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely like that whole thing is has been like especially this last like year and a half has been like a a big just for booking agents especially because like mm-hmm. they don't know us and like they'll listen to the recordings of like oh cool like we'll book you with like some like softer atmospheric like, strummy stuff yeah, yeah. like like the, the, they'll book us with like these like softer shoegaze kind of bands and stuff uh-huh. and it's like that's cool. But then when we go and play, it's like we're like really loud and like kind of noisy and just like get really heavy and stuff. And they're like, and I feel like yeah. the booking, a lot of booking agents are kind of just like, oh, OK, that's not <laughs> that's not what I expected like to happen. But it's fine. For you sure. Know? No, it's great. It's like you throw just like a blanket. It's like uh, I was about to say my chemical romance. Kill me. Uh, my <laughs> bloody it's like my bloody Valentine blanket thrown on sunset or music. I, I to simplify it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, well, uh, it's, like, it's cool. Yeah. And it's like some of the newer stuff that I've been writing to is like leaning more into this like um sort of yelly, sort of emo like thing, but like also like with like a post rock cool. shoegaze kind of thing going on. So there's a lot of just like yeah, like some of the newer songs, like I'm doing a lot more just like this yelly vocal thing and so I don't know. It's just like, yeah. You found your way back all the way to emo. I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's fantastic. I feel like if well, emo gets its emo, claws in you, it's yeah. been emo the whole time, but it's just been <laughs> it's, it's just it's been sort of like uh, veiled, like yes. thinly veiled with this like other stuff, right? Like yeah, po- post rock and shoegaze and you know and folk or whatever, but it's still emo. <laughs> that's know. true. That's true. It's all deep down. It's emo wearing a bunch of costumes. Uh, yeah. That's exactly. true. That's okay. So then, <laughs> personally, I'm, if if those are what what about best gigs? You have you toured in Europe? I feel like you have. Not with Sunsetter, like uh, no, but just with, in general. I'm curious, like what your yeah, experience like was. I've, I've been there with like Ombigaze and Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but not well, with Sunsetter. Something I like to ask that you can still answer from that, and it doesn't need to be in Europe. But uh, <laughs> any green rooms? that you've seen where you're like, this is pretty fucking dope actually, you know, cause, <laughs> cause a lot of them I'm impressed by their just be existing and being, yeah. one. but, uh, occasionally I've been in one where I thought this is actually like really nice and I do it. Should I be yeah, saying well, you know? I'll be honest, like with like on especially like we've played a lot of like really bougie gigs, like where, <laughs> where we get like booked on to like some really bougie kind of like festival or whatever. Uh-huh. So like, so yeah like i mean you know like you don't need to say the name of the festival or anything but like location wise where were you what you know what what's the green well like we've played like you know we've played like massey hall and stuff right like right true of course like so like we've played like yeah so it's like i mean the green rooms at massey hall are like you know it's like spill the beans i'm sure a lot of people who know massey hall i've never i have no idea what it looks like I wouldn't even say that they're like super like nice or anything, but it's just, it feels like being like at a, like an arena or something like that. Like it feels Mm. like being like, it's like, it's like arena green room style where it's like, there's a whole, there's a whole like floor of just like green rooms. And it's like, whoa, everyone has, there's like, it's like private bathrooms and there's like a, there's a big kitchen area where everybody can like hang out and stuff. And there's like, you know what I mean? It's, it's very like I don't know what you mean. <laughs> That's very, crazy. Very I was like, expecting at best, at best, uh a, a extremely nice looking basically teacher's lounge. Maybe there's a little no, mini fridge. Maybe it's more like a whole it's more like this whole hallway full of just like separate rooms and everybody kind of has like their own 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 private like dressing rooms and stuff. And there's like okay, gotcha. showers and bathrooms and 
like kitchens and i don't know it's like very like professional bougie is right you led with the correct word yeah wow anyway that's pretty interesting so that's kind of what the deal is at massey hall or some of these nicer places that have festivals or whatever or like the cbc like building and stuff it's you know whatever like it's like same same kind of vibe it's like there's just like these really nice like sort of like corporate kind of feeling Mm -hmm. rooms and i'm not like it's like you know that's fine or whatever it's not really my vibe though (laughs) no no i'm not yeah and you're not corporate isn't necessarily a dirty word especially the way you're using it right now i mean it is what it is those yeah yeah cbc is trying to be corporate they're not trying to be something else right no Um, no exactly uh well that's pretty interesting then i want to i want to get more into your music i when i when you think of your best song and that can mean whatever it Mm. means to you (laughs) what, what, what do you think your best song is uh i don't know um <laughs> okay well cool we can skip that uh this will, this podcast will be 20 minutes no no uh i it can mean anything it could mean the one you're really liking playing now because you are correctly expressing it live or maybe you feel like when you listen back to it the studio version you're like i fucking nailed it, it, it on tape you know I think, I, this sounds like, really I mean, good just from like a broad sort of like perspective i guess like um not to say that this is like actually my favorite or or best song or whatever, but I think that <laughs> yeah. we've been playing uh, as a band. We've been playing the song "I Actually Don't Want to Die," which uh-huh. is like this. It's like this old song that I wrote like in like 2016, but we re-recorded it as a band and then we put it out as a single like a few months ago, um, and everything. And like we've been playing it as a band, and it and it feels like as a band, it's like that is like our most like fun song to play and it feels the best and it feels like the most why fun because it's just like natural and it's like a pretty like Mm. easy song to play and it and we get to like we get to like really ramp it up and like Mm -hmm. i get get to do the yelly thing and like the energy really gets to like get to be at this like point where it's like we're just slowly like building it up and building it up and it just gets like really big and i don't know it's just like fun to play so like it feels like yeah and it it also like that song has sort of like had this weird life where like when i first when i first put it out it like the the original recording of it is just like me in a room with a drum machine and like me like yelling and going crazy and it just sounds like really kind of messed up and noisy (laughs) and whatever and but (laughs) but the thing is just like when i put it out a lot of people were like oh i love this song or whatever so like a lot of people like did connect did connect to that song and it sort of had this life of like it kept sort of people would say to me like popping up kind of yeah like years later people would be like i really like that one song or whatever and so i kind of was like oh i should just like redo that song and in a way that feels better with the band and stuff well that sounds yeah sorry i I just wanted to ask uh how did it change to re you're not rewriting it it's been written but how did it change to when you have a band involved in making the band version well it just became like more of a streamlined version of it like because the original recording is just like longer and it's more like atmospheric and there's like a lot of like noise and just like you know it's it's very like raw like and just like and and so like the studio version is still pretty like raw like we did it live off the floor and stuff so like it's still relatively raw and um you know and it just feels like the energy of, of the band it's like everyone like likes playing that song so it's just like okay. and when it's we play palpable. it live or, it's palpable yeah when we play it live people are like oh that's you know like i like that song or whatever so it's just like okay <laughs> so that's, that's exciting and it also sounds like a little bit or correct me if i'm wrong even though it's an older song maybe it actually slightly indicates more of the direction you're going on the newer songs well or... that's the thing is that yeah like it yeah that's that's what's so like uh yeah, because like, it felt like it's like an old song, but it feels like it's actually like the resurgence of it. Mm-hmm. Like me, like I'm like, this is like what we're trying to do is stuff like this or whatever. So, yeah, I love hearing like, the birds in the background. It really uh, makes your, <laughs> your living seem idyllic. It's like Disney. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting like outside of the picnic table right now. And it's, it's like fantastic. Kind of like slightly breezy and there's like bugs and birds. Oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely uh <laughs> bugs i remember those birds i remember those uh, well now unless you want to have any more to say about about that uh 
that that song, although that sounds very exciting and people go stream it, go listen to it, request it live. Um, what is your worst song? I'm very, very <laughs> curious what you think. I'm just like, okay, so I was thinking about it, you know, and it's like, I was thinking like, I feel like I've released like probably like 200 songs or okay. whatever, right? Over the course yeah. of like however many years, there's a lot of songs like on on SoundCloud and Bandcamp and Spotify and whatever. Like there's a lot that aren't on Spotify and whatever. Mm -hmm. So like I could go through and be like, this is my <laughs> worst song or whatever. Cause right, there's definitely right. some really bad ones. There's a lot but, of contenders from earlier on in the careers. Yeah. Saying, but what yeah. I decided to do is pick a song from my newest album that I just like have gotten really tired of. I uh, guess. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Instead of, instead of like being like, Oh, this is my worst song. Some song from like 2015. that sounds right, like right, shit right. or whatever. No, let's take a new <laughs> like, song and stomp on it. I'm, I'm very yeah, curious. Yeah, so like my least favorite of like the of the newest songs like from the the most recent album is probably the song "Float in Circles," and like wow. which is like which is weird because I know that a lot of people like that seems to be the most st streamed song. It's like the most. It's like the one that got streamed the most. It's like the was one it that not people a share. single too? It, yeah, it was a single. It was yeah. the first single. That's what it was I thought. Like the, it was the first single from like the new like being signed to paper bag and right, whatever right. and um like i i put a lot of effort into that song yeah. like more than i normally do like i i like rebuilt that song entirely probably like 10 times or more i kept like taking it apart and remixing it and like re-recording parts and trying to like make it work and stuff and like i finally got it to a point where i was like okay this like song like works you know why like, did it from, feel uh, like it wasn't working just like because i just wanted it to be like more like driving and like more mm -hmm. and have more more of like a pump and like a drive to it and like feel like more raw and i just like really polished it and i made it into this like thing that w that sounds good like on the radio or whatever and you know and yeah. and like I, I appreciate that that's like what it became and and whatever and it's gotten it's, it's a good first like, impression, even if you soured on it, you know, that's it yeah, like, like it's like I I understand the value of it. And it's like it's been the song that's played on CBC the most and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's had the best life out of any of the songs that I've put out like since being on the label. But like um, I just like find it so like tiresome and sort of like pedantic. It's just sort of like a, <laughs> it's 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 really not that like good of a song. It's just like two riffs and like a chorus it's like a riff and a chorus and like a riff and a chorus and then it ends and i'm like i don't know it's just sort of like we've like as a as a band uh we've all decided that we want to stop playing it because we find oh, it so boring wow yeah like so we're not like playing it live anymore like i've just sort of like tired i of mean it. there's definitely i will I, I like the song but i will say i could <laughs> see after a while it's almost like there's so much real estate that you can play yeah. with in that song because it is two chords and, and a riff that I yeah. can actually see it becoming. Yeah. A little bit, just sort of, you yeah, want some, just, some bowling alley boundaries, you know what I mean? Well, exactly. And it's just sort of like, I think what it is, it's just like, that's the first song that we like learned as a band and stuff mm -hmm. too. Like, you know, almost like it's been like a year and a half. That's so it's the old, band. basically just simple. And yeah, and it's just it's a really simple, well, sorry, it's it's a simple song, but it's also kind of like hard to pull off because it's like the studio version of it is so like um, you know, well like articulated and mixed in mm -hmm. such a way that it, like it just like works, but when we try to play it as a band, it's like it does work, but it just feels like kind of weird sometimes. Like it just doesn't really come across like the way that it's supposed to, I guess. Well, maybe and, uh, this is related to that, but how you said that you were able to you had to solve the problem of making it a little bit more um, propulsive and have this steady thing. How did you do that? Like with music, with a musical answer, how how did you do that? Achieve that? Um, I mainly just like went in and just like really edited the drums a lot and made the drums really really simplified because okay. like when we play it when we play it live, like um, like it's we play it differently than the recording like it's like you know like uh like trevor plays the drums and he he adds in like the hi-hat thing and kind of does like mm -hmm. this like the snare roll thing and it's cool like what he does it sort of is the original way that i like had thought about it in my head like what it's supposed to like be mm -hmm. um it's sort of like this like um 
this sort of like shoegaze, like Brit pop kind of beat or whatever. That's a, but on yeah. the but on the recording, I actually got rid of like the hi hat and the snare rolls and stuff, and just simplified it to just kick drum and snare. Right. So that it so that it has more of this almost like electronic music sort of thing going on, where it's just like it's just the like, you know really really simplified kick drum and snare. I totally and, agree. It lends it the, it this um not that it is this at all, but a dancey almost yeah. like that's what you like a disco. That's what you need. Yeah. That simple boom, tch, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, my whole thing with it at the time was that it's like okay, like this song is like I'm trying to make it so that it's like simplified, like. Because at the time it was like I just got signed to the label and I was like, okay, I need to like have a song that will like have potential to be like on the radio and stuff like that. And I hate mm -hmm. to like even think about it like that, but that's like what I was like. I had written the song a while back and I was like, okay, the song is like whatever. And then I was like, okay, I need to like polish it so that if it were to be played on the radio, I would feel like good about the way it sounds and it mm -hmm. comes across like properly or whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, I really that's what I really did with that song. And so like now when I look back at it, I kind of feel like sick to my stomach a little bit. Cause I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I did a really good job on the mix and the master and everything in the production of that song. And I'm happy with that, but I just don't feel like it was of, actually just, true to the original vision and you kind of compromised yeah, something, something or something like that. It's also just kind of like a boring song. I don't know. I'm just, like, <laughs> bored, of, I'm just bored of it. I don't know what to say. Like, it's and just, if you like it, you're boring. You hear that people? Okay. <laughs> no, it's like, I appreciate why people would like it or whatever because it's sad, yeah. like it's it comes across and like you know obviously I wrote the song and I'm sure I will, like, will like it again and stuff. I just sort of am tired of it, I guess. I guess that and know. also I think I think um, sometimes like we as musicians or even just music <laughs> listeners, the, there's a like a real disconnect in how we both think about our songs. Like you think about this song in all of the tiny little ways that it was accumulated to be. You think of the mixing process yeah. of the parts. It's like I relate it to paintings. It's like the artist remembers every brushstroke, but when somebody comes in and looks at the painting, all they're seeing is like, oh yeah, it looks like a cat. They did a good job. This is a cat. <laughs> and yeah. that's what people think about when they hear the song. They're like, yeah, that was a good like post rock shoegazy song dope you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and so totally. it's uh i i i sometimes almost have to remind myself of that so i don't get bogged down in my own uh yeah and feeling like every person who listens to this is gonna comb through it uh, you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely i think well, one of the biggest things is just that yeah. it's like stuff like that it's like um because now like for the newest music that i'm like working on now i'm trying really hard to like make it feel more like the way that it might feel if you were hurt to hear us play it live or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. because a lot of those like older songs are just like i really really like polished them and made them like you know sound good on the recording or whatever and but like obviously when we play it live it's completely different because it just mm -hmm. doesn't translate yeah. So now I'm so now I'm trying to write things with that in mind where it's like like we're gonna play this as a band, so it needs to like actually have like stuff that will sound good live. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever, yeah. You know what I mean? So, no, no, I get it. And also as your band changes or as your taste changes, you want the recording to reflect that as well, you know? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So and also you did the polish thing. Like yeah. do it again. You can now try a different thing, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, out of curiosity, uh, my own curiosity, are uh, two things. Uh, where are you recording? Are you recording at your place? I know you have the studio. Yeah, I, I usually just do everything uh, at my own, my own and, studio. Yeah. And then my other question was going to be: Is there a even vague ballpark six month window when you think the next batch of songs will come out? Well, yeah, like I've released two singles now. Um, I'm still yeah. got like it's still got two more coming. Uh I, I mean yeah, there's an album coming in the fall, but I, in the I don't, fall. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's all I I'm looking for a season name, not a specific date, so we're all good. <laughs> yeah. Fall. Yeah. Okay, that's exciting. That's awesome. Uh I'm actually I'm actually like literally like this week I'm like trying to finish the masters and everything for it cuz it's like it, cuz it's like 
there's yeah, a long lead up right yeah it's like a really long it's like because you know they got to do the vinyl thing and whatever so uh, yeah it just takes a while but it's the fun. vinyl thing plus it's that it's that uh label life right that's the, yeah yeah they need a lot of runway they do <laughs> well that's exciting yeah thank you so much for coming on I, this was great to uh have you hostage for a little while and ask, ask you some questions so i would just like you to if you'd like to uh introduce yourself again and the song and then the song will play <laughs> okay go um, for it um okay wait <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is andrew from sunsetter and this song is called floating circles <laughs> <laughs> 